a murder victim family member, or an exoneree, or a family member of a person on death row. But I am a human being who believes in the inherent goodness of all people and the image of God present in not just the innocent, but the guilty. My journey with this work begins with art and with the story told in Dead Man Walking. On a freezing cold January day in Boston in 1996, I walked into a theater to see this movie I had been hearing about and walked out changed. I became proximate in some small way to the life of one man on death row and the people surrounding him, including a feisty Louisiana nun, Sister Helen Prejean, who has been an inspiration to me ever since. The nagging sense of injustice and wrongness of the death penalty settled in my heart and hasn't let go. Just the word, death. When what we and all of us need is life and healing, especially when harm and violence has occurred. Why do we need to seek death when God calls us, all of us, to life? Perhaps, too, we might need to take a deeper look at ourselves and the harm we cause and what we hope to achieve, to receive when we create harm. Pope Francis, from my Catholic tradition, said, no one should be deprived of hope and the opportunity to redeem oneself, including those in prison. I am here tonight, and we are here, because the death penalty still exists in Georgia. And what that means is this. The state of Georgia, with our consent, uses taxpayer money to put citizens to death. I'm going to repeat that. The state of Georgia, with our consent, uses taxpayer money to put citizens to death. And for those who might not have made this connection, the death penalty has a through line all the way back in Georgia history to slavery, policing, lynching, Jim Crow laws, and terror. Most of us never think about the death penalty and all of its tentacles. So I am deeply grateful that you have opened your doors today to help us ponder the reality of the death penalty more deeply. Around the world, 70% of all countries have abolished the death penalty. You can't actually join the European Union if you retain the death penalty in your country. So the US is a true outlier in all of the Western world. And we are the fifth highest executing nation in the world. Georgia and 26 other states, mostly in the South, retain and use the death penalty. So the question I'd like to leave with you tonight, as you're listening to other people and, be, and kind of deeply interrogating this issue, why in 2024 do we have the death penalty? The facts show that the death penalty does not deter crime or make us safer. In fact, violence is higher in states that retain the death penalty. Death sentencing is very costly and time consuming. And we know that we get it wrong time and time again. At present, according to the Death Penalty Information Center, the national death row exoneration total is 185 persons. The data show that for every 8.3 persons who have been put to death, who have been executed, one person has been exonerated. Any business with that kind of failure rate would close. But we can't bring back a human life if we have killed it. There is a high probability that those who end up on death row 
which in Georgia is located in Jackson, where executions also take place, are poor, traumatized, mentally ill, and or intellectually disabled. And whether you receive a sentence of death relies not on a universally applied standard, but on three primary things. Where you live, the amount of money you have to defend yourself, and the determination of the prosecutor to seek a death sentence. Here in Chatham, Chatham County, you live in one of the highest um, of the counties that have the highest death sentence rating ratio. And this always catches me. There are no wealthy people on death row. Beyond the facts, though, I'd like us to consider these questions because these are the questions that I think most resonate with us, with our hearts and with our souls. Are those on death row truly the worst of the worst? How does death sentencing and its entire process affect families of those on death row? What happens if your loved one is murdered or experiences great violence at the hands of another? Does the death penalty create closure for victim families? Does the death penalty bring healing, help us to forgive, help families and communities be restored? In a moment, you will hear from Reverend Dr. Jack Sullivan, Jr., one of our Journey of Hope from Violence to Healing speakers, who will help us think and feel through some of these questions. You will also be hearing from Scott Langley, a photojournalist who has spent 25 years documenting executions. I'd like to ask you to take the time to sign in on the sheet going around so that we can continue beyond tonight to work together and make a real difference in Georgia in ending the death penalty. We have an information table just in the little um, hallway out there in the doors that you came in, and also um, a whole bunch of t-shirts on a pew out there, and they are free. We just ask that you'd wear them. And before I finish up, I'd like to call your attention to a bill in the Georgia General Assembly right now. It's House Bill 1014, which will bring Georgia in line with all other states regarding intellectual disability and the death penalty. And we invite you to RSVP with a QR code to join us at the Georgia Capitol if you can this Wednesday, February 7th, from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. to advocate for this bill. It's a Republican-led, bipartisan bill addressing the problem of the high standard of proof and confusing legal process which renders Georgians with intellectual disability at risk of execution. And please, contact your local legislators asking them to support HB 1014.